Hello again everybody, Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and in today's walkthrough we're going to be checking out the newest addition to our Quadril series, Quadril 3. So if you're familiar with the Quadril series, you're really going to love this installment as it features a redesigned Ouroboros modulation engine, tempo synced XY pad, wavetables, and also the ability to import your own samples. Alright, so now we have Quadril 3 loaded up. This is straight out of the box, the default NKI, so I'm going to go ahead and play for you a little bit so you can hear how this sounds. Alright, so before we start exploring the user interface, I want to play for you some of the presets that come with this library. There's over 300 to choose from. So if you click this drop down right up here, you'll see you have the different factory presets. So if we click and open up this, you have ARP, bass, effects, leads, pads, and plucks. You can also export and import these different presets as well. So let's just go ahead and have a listen to some of these different arpeggio presets. All right, so now let's have a listen to some of the bass presets. So if you want to check out even more of these presets, make sure to click the link up here for the preset playthrough video. All right, so now I want to start exploring the user interface a little bit, and this is our newly redesigned Ouroboros modulation engine. So if you're familiar with libraries like Ambius Prime, AVM, or Quadril 1 and 2, this should look roughly familiar to you, but we have done some cleaning up of things, added some new features that are really awesome. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and start checking this out a little bit. So you have your four different layers which when you click, you'll see that you have these different sound shaping controls down here, as well as legato. So if you click any of these, you'll see that these might change depending on how they're set up. And if you want to go through the different sound banks and categories, you just click this top one. This will give you the different categories. We have categories like jagged, animated, cerebral, driven, a whole bunch of really cool ones. And then if you click the drop down right below it, you'll see the 24 different ambiences that come with that category. So it's really cool. And then you have this XY pad right here in the center. So one of the really cool things about this new XY pad is that we've added the ability to map it to different CC controllers, which makes it really handy if you just want to control things on your own and automate things within your DAW. Or you can enable these buttons right here. And what this allows you to do is to just play a key and let it do its thing. And you can change the speed and you can change the range. So if you tighten up that range, it brings it in a little bit more. And then you can also map the X fade to some different things like the left and right, top and bottom, or the different macros that you see right here. There's four different macros that you can choose from. And then you also have these macro areas down here, which we'll get into a little bit later. 
And then above here, you also have a filter and an arpeggiator, and this is per layer as well. And then one of the things I want to mention is that you can at any time disable the animation within this. So if let's say you have the XY going really fast and you don't want it to be showing you that fast, you can turn this off so that way you only see the XY portion moving. Or you can turn that back on and then see the little image in the middle move around. So now I'm going to go ahead and play for you some of the sound design handcrafted ambiences that were created for this library. So as I mentioned earlier with the XY pad, now you can assign it to different MIDI CCs, which is really cool. So one of the things I like to do is have the left and right mapped to CC1, just so you go left and right. So if we enable these other layers, for now you're only going to be hearing the bottom two because it's going to be using the bottom left and the bottom right. But one of the cool things you can do is if you want to have some manual control, you can use CC1 like this and then turn this one on so it'll automatically move top and bottom, which is really cool. So let's check that out. Let's increase the range and I'm going to keep the speed all the way down. Then we can start moving left and right. And what makes this really useful is that you can have a little bit more control being able to utilize all four of these different quadrants. So you have four different sound design ambiences going on at the same time. So you can really have a lot of motion and texture when you're creating using this library. So before we start diving in and checking out the macro functionality, I want to show you the effects rec as this ties into it, as well as tying into the sound shaping controls. So if you're wanting to utilize the macros with effects, you can go over here to the effects rack. You have to make sure something's loaded. So then if we head back over here and you want to assign one of these macros to an effect or a layer, you can do that here just by clicking in the destination. So if we want to assign it to an effects rack effect, then you check out the slot. So you'll see the different effects that are available. So if you want to assign it to the delay or a reverb, you can do that. You can also control the parameter of that effect as well and how this affects with the macro. And then you can also control the minimum and maximum range. So if you want to set the minimum to 100 and the max to zero, that way it'll sort of reverse it. Or you can do minimum at zero, max at 100, and it'll move as you would normally expect it to going from left to right. 
So I'm going to assign this to the plate reverb and we can control some different things like the mix. I'm going to set the max to 100 and the minimum to zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the Y axis to macro number four, since that's the one that we have selected. So you have macro one, macro two, these correspond to macro one and macro two, these knobs right here, as well as three and four on the right side. So let's check this out and see how it sounds. Or you can also assign this to the delay and you can control the time, the feedback, the saturation, the depth, and a few other things. So let's just assign this and see what happens. And then you can also assign this to the sound shaping controls as well. So you can just control this by layer. So we have layer four selected. So I'm going to assign this to layer four. Let's head back over here to the main tab and you have volume attack offset release with a drop down option for pad. And then you also have some vibrato depth and rate as well as some width panning and pitch. So then let's go back over here to the macro tab. And then what I'm going to do is for the parameter, I'm going to set this to pitch. So that way we get some pitching effect going on. So let's have a listen to that. So for the four different macros that are available to you, you have four different destinations, making it really cool for sound design and just being able to take this to a whole nother level. So we can also assign this to layer four as well. Maybe we want to adjust the volume or we can adjust the vibrato depth. So I'm going to bring this down to around here and bring this down all the way to zero. Now let's have a listen to what this does. So since we had the X axis still assigned to left and right crossfade, you're still being able to crossfade left and right while having those macros control those other effects, which is really handy. So aside from the 16 available sound design categories that you have, you also have the ability to load up some wavetables as well as your own samples, which is really cool. And we'll be checking that out a little bit later. So if we want to load up the wavetables, let's click this and then make sure you're in the main if you want to affect the way that the wavetables work. So you have a few different controls here. So I'm going to bring this back over here. Let's turn this off and then I'm going to turn all these other layers off just to make sure that we're only hearing the wavetables. So you can change the position. And then you can change the form as well. And then you also have some other controls here. You got this drop down with some different types of things that you can load up like linear, some different sync options, some different bend options. Let's have a listen to these. And then you also have some lo-fi, medium, high or best. So depending on what you have loaded, you'll have some different types of sounds. And then when you start blending these with some of the sound design content, you can get some really unique combinations. So I'm going to bring this down to the middle right here, and then I'm going to turn this layer on.
So being able to combine some of these different wavetables with some of the sound design content is really cool. So getting back to what I was mentioning earlier about being able to import your own samples is really awesome because you can really create and customize your own unique patches that are unique to you while also being able to take advantage of the sound design content that comes with the library. So when you have user samples selected, you have choice between 24 different user samples that you can bring up, which is really cool. So for this example, I set up each layer to utilize the different import sample features. So when you have a layer selected and you have user samples enabled in the dropdown, all you have to do, make sure you're in the main tab and you just drag and drop right in here. And you can also change the root note of where that sample is. So if you recorded it in a specific key or note and you want it to be able to play from there and then stretch the sample around that, you can do that. So this is utilizing some samples from our Venus Symphonic Choir Library as well as a custom violin sample that I recorded. It's just an open note uh, using this violin right here. And then I also dragged in a sample from Frendo as well. So these are some different sound iron libraries as well as my own custom one that I recorded. So you can really get creative with this. So let's have a listen to how this sounds with also some of the different macros and some of the other different effects going on. So let's check this out. So I think it's really cool to be able to combine your own unique samples or just use all your own unique samples or combine your samples with the different content that comes with Quadril 3. All right, so that about wraps up this walkthrough for Quadril 3. If you'd like to learn more about this library or any of the other products within the Quadril series, make sure to go to soundiron.com or click the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on future videos like these. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya.